friends so i hope that you all are doing well today i am here to take the class 10 social science chapters with you so if we consider class 10 social science is one of the easy subjects where we can easily score marks so but we should not take it lightly because from last year onwards 21 mark questions are included in this question paper so it's very important to read the textbook line by line Today I am here to discuss the first chapter of geography that is resources and development. It's a very simple chapter, but this chapter is broadly divided into five subtopics. Let's look into that. The first one is resources. The second one is development of resources. The third one is resource planning. Resource planning. The fourth one is land resources. And the last one is soil as a resource. In this fifth subtopic, that is soil as a resource, there is a map included, and this is the first map of geography lesson. In this session, that is our first session, I am taking the first subtopic, that is resources. Let's look into what are resources. so resources is anything that is available in the environment which can be used to satisfy our needs that is anything available in our environment by human needs which is used to satisfy human needs so this chalk this blackboard that is a black chart paper a paper anything can be classified as a resources so for anything which can be classified as a resource it should be under uh, satisfying three conditions so we will look into that conditions they are it should be technologically accessible the second condition is it should be culturally acceptable and the third condition is it should be economically feasible okay so anything can be classified as resources if it satisfies the following three conditions that is it should be technologically accessible it should be culturally acceptable and it should be economically feasible and if we look into resources human being have a triangle relationship that is human being have a triangle relationship with technology with environment and with institution with institution human beings they uses these technologies To, they interact with environment that is human beings uses technology to interact with environment and they create institution to accelerate the economic development so our next sub topic is classification of resources
Next, we look into the classification of resources. Human. Okay. And this natural is further classified as renewable and non-renewable. Renewable and non-renewable. The renewable is further classified as continuous, continuous or flow. And second one is biological. And biological is further classified as natural and wildlife. Okay. And non-renewable is classified as recyclable and non-recyclable. Okay. And the next is human. Human resources are classified as structure or institution and quality and quantity. If the board is not clearly visible, I will explain once more that as resources are classified as natural and human. Natural is further classified as renewable and non-renewable and renewable is further classified as continuous or flow and biological. Biological is again further classified as natural, wildlife and non-renewable are classified as recyclable and non-recyclable and human resources are classified as structure and institution and quality and quality. That is quantity and quality. Okay. And now we look into the last portion. We look into the last portion of the first subtopic that is resources. So, the last portion of resources is types of resources. Types of resources. So resources are again classified on five bases. First one is origin. Origin. And second one is exhaustibility. Third one is ownership. And the last one is status of development. Okay. Now we will study this one by one. Origin. On the basis of origin, the resources are classified as biotic and abiotic. Okay. So everybody know what are biotic and abiotic. So I will say a simple explanation. That is biotic resources are the resources which are obtained from the biosphere and those have life. Okay. Obtained from the biosphere, biosphere and those have life. For example, it is flora and fauna. That is plants and animals. And abiotic resources are all those which are composed of non-living things. That is, they are composed of non-living materials. For example, rocks and minerals. This is first type. That is on the basis of origin. The second one is on the basis of exhaustibility. 
On the basis of exhaustibility, the resources are classified as renewable and non-renewable. So, renewable resources are also called replenishable and non-renewable resources are called non-replenishable. Renewable resources are those resources which can be renewed, reproduced through physical, chemical or mechanical processes. For example, water, they can be recycled or reproduced. And non-renewable resources are all those resources which cannot be renewed or reproduced through physical, chemical or mechanical processes. That is, they get exhausted with our use. For example, fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. So fossil fuels takes millions or hundreds of years for its formation and it usually that it easily get exhausted with their utilization. And the next type is on the basis of ownership. It's a very easy classification, okay? On the basis of ownership, the resources are classified as individual community. national and international so individual resources individual resources are the resources which are owned by individual people for example a house a land a plot etc which are owned by individual people they are individual resources and community resources are all those resources which are accessible to all the members of a community. For example, a common example is the community well. Okay? These are accessible to all the members of a community. And some other examples are village pond, public parks, etc. And national resources. National resources are all those resources which belong to a nation. For example, minerals, fossil fuels, botanical gardens, national parks, and also oceanic resources up to 12 nautical miles. Keep in mind it, okay? Oceanic resources up to 12 nautical miles. And international resources is mainly, it is oceanic resources itself, but it is oceanic resources beyond 200 nautical miles of exclusive economic zones. So everyone will be having one doubt. What are exclusive economic zones? E, E, Z. Exclusive economic zone. Exclusive economic zone is an area or distance up to which a country has exclusive rights for fishing, drilling, etc. That is up to that zone, the country has ownership on all those oceanic resources. But beyond it, that is beyond 200 nautical miles, it is international resources owned by international communities. And our last type is status of development. Status of Development So, on the basis of status of development, the resources are again classified as Potential Develop Stock and reserves. Okay, potential, develop, stock, and reserves. So, what are potential resources? Potential resources are the resources which are available in a need, in, a, in that place, that is, which are found in a region but it have not been utilized. For example, the western part of India, that is especially Rajasthan and Gujarat has enormous potential to develop solar and wind energy, but they have not been utilized. 
Okay, these are resources found in a region but have not been utilized. And developed resources. Developed resources are the resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity is determined. Surveys is we usually come across surveys in our life. Okay, so these resources will be already surveyed and their quality and quantity will be determined. And the third one is stock. Stock. These are resources which are um, which have the potential to satisfy human needs, but human beings does not have the appropriate technology to access these. That is, for example, the common example is water. So, as we all know, as we are all are science students, we know that water is can be made up of by combining two gases like H2 and O2. But it's not economically feasible for us human beings to combine H2 and O2 to produce water. So stocks are such resources which have the potential to satisfy human needs, that is our needs, but human beings does not have appropriate technology. And finally, reserves. Reserves are a subset of stocks. So what are reserves? Reserves are the resources which have the potential to satisfy human needs and we human beings have appropriate technology to access these, but we preserve it for future. If we take an example, the water resources are used for power generation. As we all know, water resources are used for power generation, but it's used to a limited extent nowadays because we protect it for our future generation, a kind of sustainable development. So this comes under, under our first subtopic, that is resources. So I will take the next session in the next coming uh, classes. Till then, bye-bye, take care, stay safe and stay home.